Hello, hello, Max here, and welcome to Blue Watch, the series where I talk you through the news and updates on the official Overwatch forums. This week, of course, the big news is competitive mode is here, and we'll discuss lever penalties and King of the Hill skill rating issues. We'll also look at ultra wide screen resolutions, and Zenyatta is being discussed. But first, the queue for Widowmaker's ult is now broadcast map wide at a volume more in line with the other ultimates. This is a minor change, but will make a big difference for a lot of players. Previously, it was so easy to miss it in the audio noise of explosions, character banter, and roadhog farts. That is nasty. King of the Hill may be assigning a disproportionately lower amount of skill rating compared to escort assault maps. Players are reporting a huge difference in skill rating gains and losses between control maps and every other game mode during competitive play. There are many things that can affect how much rating is gained or lost after a game, but players are claiming as much as a 90% difference between the game modes. I haven't started my live competitive placement games yet, so I can't comment. My fellow YouTubers Unit Lost, One Amongst Many, Overwatch Central and I are planning to do them together tonight. We think you guys might enjoy some footage of us trying to put our knowledge to the test. But until we've played a good few games, I couldn't tell you how bad the disparity is. If it's as bad as reported, then they need to remove King of the Hill from the map pool until it's resolved. It will be incredibly frustrating losing an entire skill rating on a payload map, only to gain a fraction back when winning the following King of the Hill game. Scott Mercer, a principal designer specialising in systems, is investigating the disparity, and says a fix will be released quickly if they can identify a problem. I don't usually wish horrible degenerative illnesses on other human beings, but if you leave a competitive game in progress, most of those diseases are just too good for you. If there's a chance you might not be able to finish the game, then don't start it, and if you're leaving because you think the game is a lost cause, then I'll refer you to my list of horrible ways to die and ask you to give your selection to Steve. He's actually a really nice guy. Collects pins. And heads. Apparently, Blizzard don't quite agree with my extreme methods, and Scott Mercer took to the forums to explain what happens when someone leaves a competitive game. If someone leaves before the first 30 seconds of a game has elapsed, the match is cancelled and the game ends. The player that left will receive a loss and a leave against their account, but everyone else will see no negative effects. If someone leaves after the first 30 seconds, a minute timer is started that allows the player to return to the game and carry on. If they fail to come back within that minute, the player receives a loss and a leave against their account. Every other player on the leavers team can continue the fight if they think they can win, but they are also now free to leave the game. They will still receive a loss, but they will not have a leave marked against their account. Leaving competitive games will lead to suspension from competitive play. The more games you leave, the longer the suspension will last, and serious offenders will be banned from competing for the entire season. I have to say, I like this system. At first I wasn't super keen on players being able to leave after one player has left, as 5v6 is still a winnable game. But it's nice to have the option. In competitive mode, you should be properly communicating with your team if you want to have a chance of winning at medium to high skill level. If a player leaves, you guys will likely rage for a moment, but then discuss what to do. If you decide to give up, then so be it. If you decide to fight for it, well. It could just be the greatest victory in the history of Overwatch, and you've likely just made yourself some new Overwatch buddies. When you have the option to quit, victory is so much sweeter. I'll trade a chance at that for the occasional game that's given up on. Good news for all you ultra-wide screen monitor users out there, 21 by 9 resolutions are coming to Overwatch sometime in late July. This is from the man himself, Jeff Kaplan. It is not something that has affected me personally, but it is a little strange that it was not included for the launch of a AAA game in 2016. But better late than never. Finally on this week's Blue Watch, Zinyatta is being discussed and they are exploring some options. Jeff Kaplan says they wanted to see how the Widow and McCree changes affected his performance. During the Alienware monthly melee hosted by Gosu Gamers last week, the Omnic Monk was not picked in a single game. He was nerfed out of the game in closed beta when they changed his orbs of discord and harmony to require the line of sight that we know today. These changes were necessary, but Zinyatta now needs to stay in harm's way to keep his buffs and debuffs rolling. His low 150 hit point health pool with no mobility or survivability spells makes him an easy target for anyone who can point a gun and pull the trigger. I myself like to play him every now and again, but it can be so hard to stay alive. It feels like he should be a high-risk, high-reward hero, but the reward doesn't currently justify the risk. I've heard two suggestions that I like a lot. Number one that I think is a lot less likely but would be very cool is to trade his right-click for an active damage mitigation ability. 
similar to a Zarya shield but without the damage buffing passive and definitely not as powerful. This would add a new layer to an already interesting high skill cap hero and allow him to have a chance. I think this is unlikely because it requires big changes to the hero and I'm sure Team 4 will try simpler things first. Like perhaps an increase to the reward factor by tweaking the charge time of his ultimate to bring it more in line with Mercy's. This would go a long way to improve his survivability and make him a more attractive pickup when building a team composition. Zenyatta is definitely one of the more interesting heroes and I would love him to become a more viable option. Whatever they decide to do, I'll be sure to keep you guys updated so watch this space for the info as and when it comes through. Thanks for watching, as always make sure to leave your thoughts, feelings and angry rants in the comments and follow me on Twitter at TotallyFutile. Take it easy and I'll see you soon.